Hey, welcome to Technology Paul. Today we're reviewing the new Amazon Fire HD 10 tablet, which was released in mid-October. This is an iterative update from the 2021 version featuring a 25% faster processor, an upgraded front-facing camera, and even better battery life. So did Amazon nail it with the latest iteration of their budget tablet? Let's dig in. Let's start with the experience of unboxing and setting it up. The packaging is vibrant with bright orange. Plus, there's no plastic wrapping outside or inside the box, which is an environmentally friendly choice. Inside the box, you get a USB-A to USB-C cable and an AC adapter. That's great that they include the charger, but I think ideally you would want a USB-C to USB-C cable and matching adapter, which would be a more modern setup. Taking the tablet out of its packaging, you can see the ocean blue color, which to me looks pretty nice. It's just a cool looking shade of blue. That said, the back of the tablet is plastic and doesn't feel premium at all. You can tell this is where they save some money in terms of the materials they're using. I also got the slim cover for the Fire HD and it does feel a bit more premium, though I'm not sure it's $49 premium. I am surprised at how much the Amazon branded case costs for the $189 budget tablet, to be honest. But it's a solid case that looks good protects the device and is functional as well. It auto sleeps or wakes the tablet and it serves as a stand. Now let's talk specs really quickly. The new Fire HD 10 has a 10.1 inch screen with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. That hasn't changed since the previous model, but it's still a full HD display, so it's all good. Inside you get a MediaTek MT8186A system on a chip, which is a mid-range eight core processor and three gigabytes of RAM. That's certainly not gonna give you the type of performance that will knock your socks off, but it will get the job done for many different tasks. Amazon also upgraded the front-facing camera to five megapixels from the previous generation's two megapixels, and that spec matches the rear camera, which is also five megapixels. Amazon claims the Fire HD 10 can get 13 hours of battery life, which, if true, is a really solid battery performance, more than enough for most people's needs. On the outside of the tablet, along the top, you have a sleep-wake power button, a volume rocker, and a USB-C charging port. You also get a good old-fashioned headphone jack, which is certainly a welcome addition. Along the side, you have a micro SD card slot, which gives you the ability to expand your storage up to one terabyte. That may be really helpful as the built-in storage options are either 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes. Now, in terms of setting it up, Amazon makes it relatively easy by preloading your account information for easier setup. That said, if it's a gift or something, you can opt out of that experience. Experience, or if you picked up the tablet from Best Buy, for example, there's a really easy way to set it up using your phone. All you have to do is make sure you have the Alexa app installed on your phone, then open the app and place your phone right beside the tablet. Then you will automatically get a prompt for you to set up the tablet with all your information. I like that feature as it really makes setup a breeze. You also get the option to restore your tablet from a previous backup if you had a previous Fire tablet. In my case, I chose to set it up as a completely new instance. One note notable thing that's missing is biometric authentication. You won't find any fingerprint sensors or face unlock on this tablet. Obviously being a budget tablet, this is another feature which is absent that a more premium option would have. One big win though is the ability to set up multiple profiles on the Fire tablet. This is actually a great feature from Amazon and something Apple to this day still doesn't offer on their iPads. Obviously it's a great feature for households with multiple people or children who might be sharing a tablet. You can even set up kids profiles which will make sure that they're only seeing kid appropriate content. You can set age filters to adjust what kind of apps and media they see and you can configure parental controls to set whether your kids can use in-app purchases, browse certain websites, and so on. You can also connect your kids profiles to Amazon Kids Plus, an all-in-one subscription for your kids which features apps, games, books, movies and TV shows, all free from ads, in-app purchases, and all included for $5.99 per month. I think this is a great option if you give your kid this tablet. The last thing you want them to see is a bunch of ads, pop-ups for in-app purchases, and the like. Giving your child a simple, stress-free experience 
is worth the money, in my opinion. As with previous generation Fire tablets, the home screen of the Fire HD is partially for utility and partially a marketing tool to get you to buy more products and services from Amazon. The home screen consists of three tabs. There's a For You tab, which almost exclusively consists of recommended apps, videos and books, and so on, some free and others paid. The home tab looks more like a classic grid of available apps, but they still have a widget right at the top called Discover, which again recommends more books, movies, and TV shows to you. And finally, the library tab shows you your books, apps, videos, and games, which you have already paid for or have access to. A lot of people are going to use the Fire HD 10 as a media consumption device, and it's definitely good for that. You of course have access to Prime Video and other apps like Netflix, and as mentioned, it's a full HD screen, which is great to enjoy a good movie on. I also like the live TV option within the Prime Video app. It provides access to the live TV channels you're subscribed to. I'm not subscribed to any, but it also gives you access to some of Canada's broadcast channels like Global TV, which is great if you wanna watch the news. There are other live TV services as well, like AMC Plus, BBC Earth, City TV Plus, Super Channel, and so on. You also get a picture in picture option to watch your movies or TV while doing other things on your tablet. That said, not all media apps are available on the Fire. If you want the big ones like Prime Video, Disney Plus, and Netflix, those are available. But if you want Crave, Apple TV Plus, Sportsnet, TSN, or dozens of other streaming services, unfortunately, those apps just aren't available in the Fire OS App Store. And that is a great transition into what might be the biggest problem for the Fire HD 10 its lack of available apps. Remember, this is an Android tablet, but because it's Fire OS, a custom version of Android, you get Amazon's App Store, not the Google Play Store. That means you're missing out on thousands of apps developers don't bother publishing to the Amazon Store. You might think Amazon would go out of its way to ensure the most popular apps are available, but that's just not the case. It's not like there are no apps. There are some popular apps. Here are examples of apps you can get. Spotify, Design Disney Plus, Roblox, Minecraft, Monopoly Go, Subway Surfers, and Netflix. They also have Microsoft 365 for productivity, which is a plus. That said, there are many apps that folks might want that are simply unavailable. For example, there is no Apple Music, Google Docs, YouTube, Gmail, Chrome, ChatGPT, Slack, Evernote, Trello, and I could go on. Literally 80% of the top apps you might find on the Google Play Store don't even exist in the Amazon App Store. This is definitely not not ideal. It makes it hard to take the Fire HD as a serious tablet contender. People buy tablets to serve useful purposes, and if there are only 10% of the mainstream apps available, it's only 10% as useful as other tablets. Obviously, one of the big benefits of the Fire HD 10 is its price tag. At $189 Canadian, it's one of the cheapest mid-range tablets you can buy. Now, there are definitely trade-offs to making it this cheap. First of all, they use cheaper materials like plastic back casing, and they have less advanced features. For example, there's no biometric authentication. And you get ads everywhere within the operating system itself, ads for additional free and paid content right on your home screen, for example. So who is the Fire HD 10 great for? Well, I think it could be great for people who are deep within the Amazon ecosystem. For example, they read books from Kindle, watch movies and TV through Prime Video, and do all their shopping on Amazon.com. This tablet definitely will be an excellent option for those folks since all of those things are right at your fingertips. Additionally, it's a good option for people who want a budget tablet for their kids. As mentioned, the Kids Profiles and Amazon Kids Plus make for a great option for children. The bonus is that because the tablet is inexpensive, if the worst happens and it gets destroyed or lost by your children, you're not out as much money. But there's a bigger list of people the Fire HD 10 isn't great for. It's not going to be great for people who want to use their tablet for productivity. The only productivity apps that are available are from Microsoft 365. Other than that, there are no Google Docs and other apps you might like, like Gmail, Evernote, Slack, Trello, ChatGPT, and many, many more. It's also not going to work well for people who consume media from more than just Amazon. You'll need a different tablet if you want to watch streaming services that are not Prime Video, 
Netflix, or Disney+. Plus. Most other streaming apps are simply unavailable on the Fire tablet. And the Fire HD 10 is definitely not suitable for people who don't want to be bombarded with advertising. Again, this tablet is designed to get you to buy more from Amazon with their use of primary real estate on your home screen to showcase paid content from their advertisers. Many people won't like that experience. And frankly, I don't blame them. But that's my opinion. What do you think of the Fire HD 10? Did you order it or are you considering it? Did you buy it for yourself or for your kids? How much utility does it provide the average tablet user? Let me know what you think in the comments. If you found this video useful, do me a favor and leave a like, and more importantly, subscribe to my channel for more tech content updated regularly. I focus a lot on gadgets and smart home automation, so stick around if that interests you. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.